All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm trying to get, it's been a while since I have made any videos. Everything's collecting dust in here. Today we're gonna be talking about the hydrogen atom, okay? It's on the table of elements there. It's number one, you can't miss it. It's the first element on the table of elements, okay? And I think this book's very important here. A friend gave this to me a long time ago, 32nd Elements, okay? Just gives you a brief description of the hydrogen atom. And I think it's very important that you take a look at this picture here. It has a picture of the sun, because we know the stars consume hydrogen. There's a picture of the Hindenburg. We're all familiar with the Hindenburg. If you take a look here, this is the most abundant and simplest element in the universe. I'm going to try to film this in the book here so you guys have something to pause and you can go back and read it. I hope I got a good shot of this. So it tells you a lot about the hydrogen atom, okay? So you guys can go back and read that. It's the most abundant thing in the galaxy, I mean, you can't miss that, okay? So I haven't made any videos in a long time. A lot of dust in here, everything's collecting dust. We're gonna talk about the water molecule. We're gonna talk about a lot of different things. But I think the hydrogen atom is extremely important. So we're gonna add that as the basis of this video. Now the oxygen atom is over here, it's number eight. And during electrolysis, you guys know that the oxygen atom is slightly larger. It's actually eight times larger than the hydrogen atom. Okay, so oxygen bubbles are a lot larger than hydrogen bubbles when you look at your electrolysis plates okay hanging out with big oil what's up big oil how you doing buddy there he is so you'll be seeing a lot of him around here and uh just just wanted to throw that in there real quick and i'm going to continue on with the video i might make a, a bunch of short sections and just add them all together okay so we're going to talk about the atomic realm we're going to definitely talk about hydrogen and oxygen atoms that's probably why a lot of you came to this channel to begin with so here we go. All right, as we move further into the hydrogen atom, this is the atomic state. This is what it looks like on a piece of paper in 2D. So you have one proton and one electron zipping around this thing, okay? I have this little, this E symbol. And this is the electricity in atoms right here. This electron, we count on this to make electricity. It also makes light. I'm gonna show you how it does that. Anytime you excite an atom, and this electron jumps up here, and it jumps back down. This, this movement between these electron orbital shells, okay, I've labeled them as one and two. There are several shells, eight, nine, it goes further. There's many different levels an electron can sit and move. And those packets of energy between them are also fixed. So you get different colors of light. Seeing so a hydrogen atom in a certain wavelength that gives off like a purple light. So how scientists look out into space and see this stuff and identify atoms through fingerprint physics. Okay, so you have this electron right here. Say it jumps out to the outer outer orbital right there. Well, it's going to create photons. Okay, photons. This how you, this is how light's created. A lot of people ask me, well, where does where does the light come from? Well, this movement of this electron when it falls back down to this closer to the proton, it gives off this wave. You see, and light is polarized. It has a positive and a negative. But sometimes when you pass it through through certain crystals it can change polarity okay even moonlight is polarized just wanted to show you a little bit about this you know understanding the hydrogen atom is very important before I even turn on this little electrolysis setup that I have here you can see I use a carbon fiber electrode on the left and I have a carbon fiber electrode on the right I'm doing this because I want to keep my distilled water completely clear see a lot of people are don't understand the science behind all this you know and that is You'll see that on YouTube a lot of people are doing the same thing over and over again. You'll see stainless steel electrodes on the positive anode side and you'll see that they're creating rust because iron leaches out of the stainless steel. A lot of people don't know this. They're not doing things atomically correct. Okay? You got to remember that. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about this glass of water right here. Believe it or not, it's sitting still and I don't have it plugged in. I'm not performing any electrolysis. Before I do that, I want to discuss Brownian motion. Okay, it was discovered by Robert James Brown. Uh, I mean, it's not easy to believe that this glass of water right here, you see this glass of water? 
it's moving around at the speed of light the molecules in there these molecules are jolting around in there at the speed of light okay it's moving around you can't see this unless you put it on a microscope and the evidence is right there before your eyes all you gotta do is take some pollen grains and put them in there and look under the microscope and you'll see that they're being battered around by the water unbelievable huh well this was this is this is called Brownian motion it was discovered by Robert James Brown it's a Scottishman from back in the day okay I just wanted to bring that up to you guys so you also understand that heat is just when it, you go down to the size of an atom or a molecule heat is just a transfer of energy there's no sound down at the level here there's no energy transfer is just the heat to these is just a, a form of transferring energy you know heat is just a measurement of how fast the molecules are moving I could boil this water and turn it into steam I could change it to all three states of matter if I wanted to okay I could turn it into a, a gas now there's another thing you need to know in fact molecules are 250,000 times smaller than pollen grains okay and we know this because Einstein did the math okay Einstein did the math and he knows how small they were this was a long time ago when all this was discovered so I just wanted to cover Brownian motion before I plug this thing in and show you guys what's going on with the electrolysis process so the water is already moving you can't see it but it's jiggling around at the speed of light and it looks like a still glass of water and I think that's amazing and I thought I should point that out Brownian motion I can't really cover all this science without pointing that out it's very important okay Robert James Brown is a, a Scotsman He's a pretty smart guy, so uh, I'm going to move on to the next part of the video. Let me get in here and show you some of this. But when I say atomic state, okay, let's plug this in. When you plug this in, I'm going to plug in my DC square wave rectifier here, okay? This is just a small power supply that I have. I'm going to turn it on. just wanted to show you guys a little bit of this real quick. And if you notice, my electrolysis kicks in here, and there's my carbon electrode, okay? And you see how small the bubbles are on the right side. This is the negative side. Okay, this is my negative. Okay, this is my cathode. Okay, over here's my anode. This is my positive side. This is where my oxygen atoms are being created. Look how big they are. You see how much larger these bubbles are? Okay, compared to these hydrogen atoms over here, how small they are. Look how small those bubbles are. You can clearly see that see there's some size going on here okay that's how they get their atomic weights there's eight protons this is larger it's eight times larger than the hydrogen atom okay so it's very important that you guys see that I'm gonna move on to the next part of this video I'm gonna have to keep making little vids and I'm just gonna slap it all together I hope this helps you guys understand what's going on here this is how I keep my water so clear using electrodes like this I've done a lot of experimenting with carbon fiber you can use stainless steel, but you, you have to use it on the hydrogen side, see? You can't use stainless steel on the, uh, on the anode. You can, but it's going to rust. It's going to leach rust out. Okay, I'm going to move on. Let me show you something like this. Look, if you look in here, you guys got to start thinking of this water as not just an endless source of gas, but it's also an endless source of electricity. See? See, look, I'm not even connected. This is like wireless electricity, look. See? Look. See, I'm picking up its magnetic field. I'm locking into that magnetic field. And I'm pulling electricity, see? You can tap into that. It's also an endless source of electrons. That's the byproduct of electrolysis. A lot of people don't know that. See? We'll get into that later. Let me move on. So as all you can see, it's very important to look down at the atomic structure of the water molecule to understand what's going on in these processes. You know, you don't want to just copy everybody else. You got to understand what's going on. Okay? To make hydrogen, to make oxygen. And you got to understand when you have these two gases made together like this, this is what HHO is. You know, both the gases are mixed together. If you were ever going to store hydrogen, you have to separate these two gases. And I'm going to show you guys how that's done. 
you can separate these two gases. Neither of them are flammable by themselves. Only in the presence of oxygen is hydrogen even flammable. Isn't that funny? Hydrogen's not even flammable. It has to it has to have the oxygen over here. Yeah, it has to have that. Yeah. So I have to cut this short, the video is getting too long, so I might have to make a part two. But when you say atomic state and you look at the hydrogen, you know, these, these atoms are too sociable to just be laying around. They're always binded with something else, you know? That's how you get the water molecule. These things are binded together with the covalent bond, okay? And I've showed you in the last video how electrons move back and forth, photons are created, okay? And it's important, there's wavelength, frequency, it's measured in hertz. Then you have the spectrum. Is it visible light or not? Is it UV? Is it ultraviolet? So you need to know these things. What frequency? Okay. How many nanometers? Where, where are you at on the chart? So it's very important. Okay. I tried to squeeze as much as I could in, so I'm going to have to make a part two. But there's your water molecule. These are some of the subatomic particles that make this thing up. You have the neutron, the electron, the proton. Okay. Making up this water molecule. So what's going on in here? You know, the pulling apart of this water molecule using electricity. If you notice right here, the shape of the water molecule is also very important. Okay, it's a tetrahedron. Okay? Okay? Every, everything exists on Earth just because the oxygen atom is a little greedy with its electrons. Otherwise, none of us would exist and this video wouldn't even be made. Okay? That's how you get this Mickey Mouse head set up right here. See, otherwise, they'd be all lined up with each other, but you can see how the oxygen atom is a lot more greedier with its electron. So that's how you come up with this, this formation right here. Let me see if I can get in here and show you some more images. Oh. But that's the shape. That's how that works. You see your hydrogen atom? You got your oxygen atom? And it's all about destabilizing these atoms, you know? That's what's happening. You're knocking, plucking electrons off. Once you pluck off an electron, you have an ion, okay? You have a positive ion. And then the oxygen atom right here is asking for two more electrons. And that's how this hooks up. The hydrogen atom connects with the oxygen atom to form the water molecule. Okay, I'm going to show you how all that works, but I've got to keep this video short. I'm just going to show some pictures. I'll show you how to make your own spiral by putting two speaker magnets together and doing this, okay? The water molecule, the oxygen atom, okay? The hydrogen atom, look how simple that really is, just one proton. So when you look at your table elements, you know how simple a hydrogen atom is. That's how it gets to number one, okay? It has many isotopes. You always want to remember it looks like Mickey Mouse. Strange. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video and I'll go ahead and make part two. Just wanted to show you guys some of this stuff, the way it looks at the atomic level, the way it's printed in 2D. You know, is it an eternal design or infinite accident? You know what I'm saying? Remember what I was saying? It'd all be laying out straight like that if it wasn't for the uh, oxygen atom. So you get this tetrahedron, you know, just like in Egypt. They're eight-sided pyramids. Okay, and they're not four-sided, they have eight sides. You can go search this for yourself, I'm telling you, they're shaped just like water molecules. And that's also why it's on the back of the dollar bill. It has a lot to do with power, and you have to understand what these things are made out of. You know, what's matter made out of, you know? You have to understand the subatomic particles. We'll get down into quantum physics later. That's a little more complicated for you guys, but that's what this channel's about. We're gonna break it all the way down into quantum physics. All right, guys. Video one. Hope you like this.